Hello students, welcome to the topic of electrophilic substitution reactions in our series of videos, Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Concepts. Electrophilic substitution reactions, so as the name indicates, that means the attacking reagent will be an electrophile, an electron loving species, a species which itself is short of electrons. The example that we've taken up over here is halogenation, specifically chlorination of benzene ring. So you have a benzene ring, it reacts with chlorine in the presence of halogen carriers like FeCl3, iodine, AlCl3 to give us chlorobenzene and the byproduct of this reaction is HCl. That means substitution is taking place in the benzene ring. Let us first understand the steps of this reaction. We have specifically taken an example over here so it's easier to relate to rather than doing a generalized study. First step is you need the electrophile in order to carry out electrophilic substitution reaction. So chlorine ClCl in the presence of FeCl3. Now this FeCl3 actually needs electrons because of the vacant orbitals in it. So what happens is chlorine breaks down heterolytic fission happens over here because the product of this particular step of the reaction is the chloronium ion and FeCl4 negative. In other words, it is giving us ions, not free radicals. Hence, it, it is involving heterolytic fission of chlorine molecule. The second step involves, now this Cl positive is short of electrons. It's got a positive charge. On the other hand, benzene ring, if you notice that there are three double bonds. Three double bonds means each of it is a pi bond. Because of the presence of pi bond, this benzene ring has a layer of electrons above and below it. In other words, it starts behaving as an electron rich species. Because it behaves as an electron rich species, Cl positive gets attracted to it. It tries to pull the positive, sorry, the pi electrons from the benzene ring. In the process, our carbon number two, so we are going to number it as one, two, three, four, five, and six for the sake of clarity. So our carbon number two becomes deficient in electrons, acquires a positive charge. Now it is positively charged, it has got only three bonds. The other two, the other carbon atoms, they remain unaffected. Now we have read about resonance in our earlier study, in our earlier videos also have explained the concept of resonance. So what happens is the pi electron cloud is pulled from here with the result. Now it is carbon number four which acquires a positive charge whereas the double bond, this one remains untouched and bond between carbon number two and three becomes a double bond. Here, that's the second. Same way, now this positively charged carbon has a tendency to either pull the electrons from the second and the third carbon, in which case it will revert to the first state, or alternately it can pull from carbon number five and six, that is this bond gets shifted. With the result, our carbon number six carries a positively positive charge. Notice over here, this particular carbon has got one, two, three, four groups attached to it. So it's a sp3 hybridized carbon. Overall, this species is positively charged and we are talking about canonical structures over here. So the intermediate is represented by the resonance hybrid. Overall, it carries a positive charge. This intermediate form is what we call as the sigma complex or a rhenium ion. Come, taking it from aromatic compounds or a ryl ion, we've got a rhenium ion. So we've got carbocation. It's a carbocation but in the form of a ring. This will be highly unstable. It will have a tendency to somehow either to lose its positive charge. So Step 3 involves the loss of a proton from the arrhenium ion in the presence of the nucleophile. 
Now our nucleophile in this case is the one which was generated in the first step of the reaction that is FeCl4. So the nucleophile that we have over here is FeCl4 negative. It has a tendency to be released as such. So it will take the proton from the benzene ring giving us HCl as a byproduct. And if you notice FeCl3 is regenerated. So what is the purpose of FeCl3 over here? It is simply helping to release the Cl positive. That is why we also call them as halogen carriers. They are the ones which help to carry the halogen to the benzene ring. In any chemical reaction, it is always the slowest step which decides the rate of the reaction. Now in this case, if you notice, the first step, the first step which is the slowest is the one which involves the attack of chloronium ion on the benzene ring. Hence, it is a bimolecular reaction. Experimentally, we have observed that rate of this reaction is dependent on the concentration of the initial substrate, that is our reactant, as well as the concentration of the electrophile. Hence, we have 1 plus 1 makes it 2. It is a second order reaction. If this particular halogenation was to take place on the side chain, so let's suppose I have CH2OH and there is replacement or let us suppose, let's take a simple alkyl only. So let us suppose I have CH3 over here. Now if this reaction is taking place with chlorine in the presence of light, the product that I will get is CH2Cl. In other words, replacement is taking place in the side chain, not in the benzene ring. In such a case, now when we are doing this chlorination in the presence of light, it becomes a totally different mechanism. Now it will be it will follow the path of a free radical reaction mechanism and substitution is taking place in the side chain. Hence, we have to see where the substitution is taking place. Substitution in the benzene ring involves electrophilic aromatic substitution. There are many examples of electrophilic substitution reactions. All of them, I've tried to list most of them here. The first one is nitration. Nitration means a replacement by the NO2 group. This is nitration. So benzene ring, when treated with concentrated HNO3 and concentrated H2SO4, gives me the nitro benzene as our product. Here, the only difference would be the generation of the electrophile. Rest everywhere you have to just change the electrophile. So instead of Cl positive, it will become NO2 positive. Depending upon what type of reaction you are talking about. So, how is the electrophile generated when I am talking about nitration? During nitration, we take concentrated HNO3 and concentrated H2SO4. H2SO4 is a stronger acid compared to HNO3. So this acts as an acid, this acts as a base. H3O positive, NO2 positive, HSO4 negative. This is will be our first step when we are talking about nitration. The rest of the steps remain the same. Only thing is you'll have to replace Cl. Wherever there is Cl, you have to replace it by NO2. So that makes it easier to remember and how to write the mechanism of electrophilic substitution reaction. So once you know this basic mechanism, you will be able to figure out the rest on your own. Let's talk about friedel crafts alkylation. friedel crafts alkylation means replacement of the hydrogen of the benzene ring by an alkyl group in the presence of anhydrous AlCl3. So how is the electrophile generated over here? So we have an alkyl uh, halide. It could be CH3Cl, C2H5Cl, anything. And we have anhydrous AlCl3. Again, it has vacant orbitals. So AlCl4 negative plus R positive. Now this R is actually, again, 
CH3, any alkyl group, CH3, C2H5, anything. So now in the second step, the Cl gets replaced by the alkyl group. Friedel Crafts acylation. Acylation is replacement by the acyl group, RCO group. So what do we have over here is um, acyl chloride, RCOCl. So we could have uh, uh, ethanol chloride like C2H, CH3COCl. In the presence of anhydrous aluminium chloride gives us the corresponding ketone. The mechanism of the first step, RCOCl, that is, uh, let us say CH3COCl, acetyl chloride plus ClCl3 will give us an intermediate uh, compound which releases RCO positive, CH3CO positive, that is the acyl cation. Sulfonation. Sulfonation takes place with fuming sulfuric acid or it is nothing but concentrated H2SO4 enriched with sulfur trioxide. That is why it is called fuming sulfuric acid. Now effectively what is it is H2SO4 plus SO3 giving us H2S2O7. This is what we can take fuming sulfuric acid to be. Now because it is rich in SO3, S O3, this is the structure. Oxygen is more electronegative. Pulls the electron towards itself. This is the negative end. This is the positive end. It is this positive end which becomes attached to the benzene ring. So again, when we talk about sulfonation, our electrophile will be SO3 over here. So this is how we discuss the electrophilic substitution reactions. Again, I insist, if you can write and teach this mechanism to somebody, your learning gets enhanced. You will be benefited. Somebody else will also be benefited. Any doubts, please feel free to comment on the video and keep watching. Thank you.